Good morning, Wild Pack. Aru! What's up? Happy Friday, y'all. Y'all. What is going on? I'm watching the chat. Y'all, I think today I'm just going to watch y'all chat and, and, <laughs> and tune in. That's really a lot more fun. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Marsha. Good morning, Ma Wib. Ma Wubba Wubba Wubba. That's how I always say your name is Ma Wubba Wubba Wubba. Gail. Morning, morning. Jules. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Natasha, Amy, Teapot, good morning. Whoop, whoop, Valerie, Wolf, Aru. Ooh, the animals visited you this morning. Deer, fox, and your horses. Ooh, party at Valerie Wolf's house. That's what I'm saying. Good morning, Krista Cook. Aru. Are y'all in the mood for love? Some kind of love this morning? Good morning, Sharon. All right, so Rosa, all right, everybody's pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. Good morning, folks. Good, 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 good morning. Whoop, 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 whoop. No parking, baby. No parking on the dance floor. That's what I'm saying. Y'all, the songs that have been running through my mind today, I don't even know what's going on. Um, right, always in, the, always in the mood for some kind of love. That should be a song. I bet it is out there. So can't stay long. <gasps> You're having a medicine wheel reading with Maureen, Lisa. It's going to change your life. Yes, it is. Just so you know. All right. So we will get started. Um, uh, so first of all, thank you to my moderators, uh, Teapot. Hey, Catherine. Good, oh, my gosh. Good morning. All the way. Katharina, aren't you? Um, you're in Ireland, right? Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so. Uh, thank you so much to Teapot and Amy. Uh, thank you to everybody who shows up for this craziness that we, that we do up in here today. And I will have to say today really, really is all about love. But before we get started on that, um, has somebody out there in it, you know, um, I, I don't know y'all there's, uh, let me just say it. I don't know if y'all remember that song or have ever heard the song from the Carpenters in the seventies or eighties. Um, and it was the, their, their alien ship song. It was, um, calling occupants of interplanetary craft, calling occupants of interplanetary most extraordinary craft. And then, um, you've been observing our earth. It was her brother. It was her brother on one of those synthesizer things. And we'd like to make contact with you. Uh, have y'all ever heard that song? Somebody have heard that song, please. If you haven't, you may want to listen to it. Look it up on YouTube. So here's the thing about that song. That song started running through my head over and over and over and over and over again this morning. One of y'all out there or a bunch of y'all out there are all up in the alien stuff right now, like galactic, spacey, alien-y stuff. This reading, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, you remember, Gail. Hold on, I'm gonna look on, um, I'm gonna look on Google and see what the name of it is. I don't remember the name of it either. I know every lyric there is to it. I just can't think of the name of it, but, um, so, Here's the strange thing. Whoever is like into the alien um, galactic kind of stuff right now, this is this reading is very especially for you. Uh, Carpenters. Hold on. I'm looking it up. Carpenters alien song. That's what it's called. Apparently calling occupants of interplanet interplanetary craft. Who knew? So, um, yeah, there's something going on. <laughs> Amy, you are an alien. You're into it. Um, you're into that. Okay, cool. Hey, Carl. Esoterics. You think it's little C big thing. You you think al angels are aliens. Okay. Hey, Dimas. Okay. So see, I didn't, I don't know. We don't ever really talk about aliens. Oh, the inner work club. Good morning. Um, very into aliens after experience you had last year. Oh, what a Vipassana. A vipas Vipassana retreat. Vipassana? Yeah, it's Vipassana. I know what it is. I just can't say it. What is dar lar 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 lar? Um, you look for you. <gasps> Jules, you look for you. Okay, see, that's what I'm saying is so here's how it happened, just so y'all know. Um, oh, you're Natasha, you're into star seeds. Okay, so here's how it happens when y'all know. So I do my very best to disconnect at night, because if I don't disconnect or try to disconnect from the psychic world, I wake up far more tired or tireder, or just exhausted, even if I think, what? 
Lisa, you caught a UFO on camera at the Grand Canyon in May. Um, and we're just hearing about this now. Why? Ooh, girl, we got to see that vid. Um, put it on the, um, uh, put it on the forums, Lisa. Let's start an alien thread on the forums. Oh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to start an alien thread, um, on my forums. If you guys haven't been there, uh, get to wildpackwisdom.com forward slash forums. There are my forums. Um, we talk about all this kind of stuff. It is, um, it is the safest place on the internet. It is moderated. It is a private community. It's free. It's mine. Um, I don't take any stuff there. So we don't have spammers. We don't have trolls. We don't have nonsense. Uh, and you can talk about anything you want, not be afraid of getting shadow banned or blocked by, you know, the social media gurus that don't like what you're saying. We don't do that there because freedom of speech, right? Okay. Um, unless, unless you're causing problems and then the ban hammer is strong. So all of that being said, uh, let me also just say this y'all there, um, there, there have not been too many lately, uh, but the scammers will come up in, in the feed. So please don't if somebody's like, I'm drawn to you, inbox me for a reading. That's none of my people. That's not ever going to be any of my people. And that is not me. So please be wary and don't do it. They don't, they're, they're scammers. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, all of that being said, let me also say, uh, if you would please, and thank you, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little ringy dingy bell thing to get all the notifications. That'd be very helpful. It would help more people find out about tarot and animals, um, animal spirit, totem and power animals and, and psychic things and mediumship things and all kinds of metaphysical things that I are, are hopefully are very helpful to you. <gasps> twinkle, twinkle. Good morning. Who doesn't love a name like that? Okay. <laughs> Damn autocorrect. Yeah. I, um, my autocorrect is very stubborn. It keeps ty typing duck when I'm trying to type another word. <laughs> or other words, should I just say? I don't know why my phone doesn't know me by now. That, let me tell you something. I am not in good relationship. This is one of those fancy schmancy new iPhone 12 SS, super powered, bionic, supersonic, super shamanic phones. It, uh, let me tell you something. My flip up phone was smarter than this dang thing. Um, my dang Nokia back in the day was smarter than this thing. But anyway, um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We've uh, done enough, but serious business, y'all. So here's how it happened. So I, um, when I connected this morning, I don't know why I did it in the shower. I know better than to try to connect when I'm in water or surrounded by water. And I thought somebody has dropped a toaster in my, I'm looking down around me and I'm like, somebody's dropped a dang plugged in toaster into my water because I lit up from the flow up. I really think if I had a camera there, Y'all have been able to see video of my hair standing on end, on on slap end. No joke. And all of a sudden, it was like Karen Carpenter was standing right in front of me, singing right, right to me. And all I could hear was that song over and over and over again, calling occupants of interplanetary craft. Um, and then I started to sing it with her. And I think I can actually mimic Karen Carpenter now pretty good. But all of a sudden I was like in this flow and in this rhythm. And then I wasn't in my shower anymore. Um, I was out in space somewhere and I was just sitting there just kind of like watching all the spacecraft go by. And let me just tell y'all if space truly, truly the where I was in space this morning, if it true, that's why I wore all of these colors this morning. Cause it's a fiesta. The, the, the colors that I saw out there, um, just the colors of the cosmos and everywhere, wherever I was, it was, I don't, I don't, I'm a color person. I, I love me some color, but I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, okay. Listen, Angelina, there's nothing angelic about you. I just talked about you scammers. I'm sending all the love to you in the world because you just are going through something in your life right now where you think you have to scam people to get what you want. And I'm sorry for you because that means you're in pain in every way and every day. And I hope this heals you. Block. Block. Blah, 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 blocked. Excellent. Okay. Um, it is a big phone. I, we call it a fabula. It's, it's a phablet. It's part phone and part tablet. Um, but I'm a big girl. I need big phones. And when you get to be my age and you're wearing glasses and you're trying to read the stuff on the screen. So anyway, um, so here's the thing. So yeah, so I was out there all this morning and, um, oh wow. Y'all watched ET last night. What? Okay. Oh my gosh, Natasha. I don't even know why I picked up this phone. 
See, this could be for you. Phone home. I bet there was a... I bet there was a message in that E.T. movie for you all last night. I'll bet you anything. E.T. phone home. Phone home. I can't watch that movie. It still makes me cry. It truly does. It kills me. If y'all ever saw Star... Star Man? No. Um, oh, the one with Robert Preston, who is the music man. And this kid lives in a trailer park. And he and his girlfriend end up... The, Robert Preston is actual alien, and this kid makes such high scores on the Atari game that's in his trailer park. The aliens come to get him to be a spaceship pilot and fight their big war for them, and he wins. And then they go up in the rocket ship later, because I grew up in, a, in, in kind of a trailer park. I would probably go up too. Um, yes, blocked. All right, so here we go. The last Starfighter. Thank you, Cicely. Thank you very much. All right. So... All of the all of the housekeeping is out of the way, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So what I would really like for you all to do, because Fridays are about love, right? It's the throat chakra day. It's, it's, uh, it's the day of love. It's the day of communication. And for whatever reason, those of you that are really all up into the alien galactic, and, and I'm, I keep hearing alien galactic, alien galactic over and over again, this reading today is for everyone, for sure, as regards love. But let's talk about that for two seconds, right? Let's talk about love, baby. Let's talk about you in this reading. So, oh gosh, have you guys seen Ready Player One? I have watched that movie a thousand and a half times. Okay, listen, before I get started, started, I've got to know this. Are any of you guys into the gaming community? Are any of you guys into gaming, like online gaming, digital gaming? Please type yes. All right, just I need like five yeses, and then I'll go ahead with this story that I'm going to tell you because you're going to have heard it here first, and you're going to love me for it. Okay, or yeah, or somebody you love loves gaming. No joke, gaming. Okay, I need three more. Who else is into gaming? Who else is into gaming? Who else is into gaming? Who loves gaming? Yes. Th oh, girl, I knew that. Love to the horns. Love the horns. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hook you guys up. Check out a new app called VV. The letter V is in victory. The letter E is in Edward. The letter V is in victory. The E is in Edward. Okay, listen. Please focus. For those of I'm serious, serious, serious business. I'm about to change your life. I'm about to change. If somebody you love loves gaming, I'm going to change their lives. There is an app called VV. And it is a cutting edge technology for uh, augmented reality. And in this, in this VV-verse, their multiverse, if you guys haven't heard of, yes, VV for the gamers, unique. Yes, girl. Yes, yeah. oh, I, I'm assuming you're a girl. I think you're, uh, or I, it doesn't matter to me what you, oh, I, let me just say, thank you, unique. Um, VV, okay, listen, y'all check out the app. And I could spend the next eight hours telling you all about this, but at the end of the day, you'll never have seen anything like this. And as the technology rolls out and, de and, and develops and rolls out and rolls out and rolls out, and just so you know, um, the guy that, the guy that um, licensed Pokemon and a few of the other, like the biggest toy brands and biggest kid brands you ever heard of in the world, He's a huge partner in this. And then the other people that are partners in this, their background in licensing and gaming, it is, I'm telling you, this is, this VV-verse, it's changing the world of collectibles. It's changing the world of fashion. It's changing the world of augmented reality. It's changing the world of AR. And it's changing the world of gaming like you've never seen. And it is going, going, going. So um, I'm just saying it again, Vivi, you can thank me later. Um, I take donations because I give half of it to the animals. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm telling you, Vivi. And if you're up into cryptocurrency at all, I'm telling you now, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't do any of this stuff. But Vivi, their crypto, their token is called Ecomi, the OMI token, O-M-I, E-C-O-M-I. Look it up. That's all I want to say because this is not a crypto channel. I'm, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not giving you financial advice. All I'm doing is telling you that if you're a gamer or you love a gamer, check out the VVverse. You will thank me a thousand times over the next few years. Anyway, okay. So here we go. So what I'd really like for you guys to do is think about anything that's really honestly that's in your heart. Um... Uh, and, and again, I don't know why this is very, uh, this reading is for everybody. It's important for everybody. 
But for those of you that are all up into the alien galactic stuff, please, please listen very carefully. Please listen very carefully during today's reading. So, um, Natasha, you're, it's going to blow your mind. So, um, Fridays, you know, I chose them to do, you know, the love readings, the love tarot readings, the, you know, stuff that, that, that are really on people's minds. They always want to know about. But in that whole galactic thing that unfolded for me this morning, I, you know, triple Scorpio, you think you have a pretty good beat, you know, on what love really is. Because at the end of the day, Scorpios only incarnate for one reason, and that's to find the perfect love, right? Within and without. And so I thought I knew what it was. And I don't think I have the words to describe what the feeling was or even the visual. But if you can imagine not feeling love or seeing love or experiencing love, but being love in its truest, most pure form. And I've never had this happen to me before. Never. I anything that you've ever thought felt seen it, it's to degrees that you can't even it's so profound that it almost doesn't seem like it's affecting you it just is and it's the safest hap, not even happy but j ecstatic not even joy it's not even happy joy it's like ecstasy it's all knowing, it's all forgiving. It's uh, y'all don't even have the words for it. All I can say is do a journey and try it for yourself. Try it for yourself. Ask Karen Carpenter to come to you and sing, you know, get get in get in harmony, get in relationship with Karen Carpenter. That's all I can say. But it is craziness. And so um, you know, uh, Demos, that might be true. Modern humans might be alien descendants and we might be a mixture between human and extra extraterrestrial life. I've seen crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, crazy stuff that was not a trick of my imagination. And I'm going to say it again. Uh, I have no problem with people that, you know, uh, I, there's no judgment here. Whatever you put in your system, whatever you put in your system, but see this mint that I'm fixing to put in my mouth. Th that's about it. When I was younger, you know, I partied like a rock star drinking, but nothing else. <laughs> so uh, it's just not me. I don't, you know, I don't cotton to it. It's just not but there's no judgment. The reason I bring that up is I get asked all the time, well, you must've been tripping. I was tripping, but not, not for any other help other than the visions that I got and the people and the energies and the whatever came to me. And so when I tell you all these crazy visions, they're pure. I, not to say that, that plant medicine is not valid. I truly believe that it is. Um, I really truly believe some man, some plant medicine properly, I'm going down a rabbit hole, but I just want you all to know this isn't like Mama Bear is, you know, sit, <laughs> sitting in her bathroom, you know, ha having some something, something and goes on these wild rides. It doesn't work that way with me. So I don't know what this is about love, but today's love reading is it may. I know it's the most important one I've done so far. It may end up being the most important one that ever comes out of my mouth on this channel because it, it just it, the, the love of all kinds was just so big so profound so all it, it was it was the all that is so let me go so um so really for you what that means is if you'll just focus on whatever you feel like you want to resolve what you want to start what you want to leave behind what you want to heal seriously teapot no joke um <laughs> sitting in my bathroom lord i did go i done went there didn't i actually i did so um so that, uh, I'm just going to get started. Spirit's like, shut up and just get started. Okay. Nope. It's lit. It, 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 do it if you want to do it if you don't, but if you'll just take a second and get very quiet and just take a very big, deep breath. And focus on your intention and take it one step at a time. You may have a number of questions about love. 
of any kind, you may have one big question about love. And this can be self-love, love for a past one. Let me just say this. If you are focused right now on the love that you have for someone who's crossed over, here's a message I just got. Be very clear that this reading today will activate you to open your love, love portals, which is pretty much every teeny tiny weeny peeny bit of your being. And you will have a major encounter with someone who's crossed over that you love if you will open to this today. No joke. Craziness. Okay. So the first card um, that's come and what we're going to do is uh, I usually do a past, present and future tarot reading. Um, and remember, for those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you who have been here a while, you know, I love you. Thank you so much. And um, I read with my own Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck, but it does correspond to the traditional tarot card meanings of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. And so I always talk about the animal, which in my deck is the puffer fish. And then we do a deep dive on the particular card because it's going to mean a little bit different things for a little bit different people. So when we take a look at the traditional tarot card meanings for the nine of cups, um, you know, what you'll see, and again, I, I usually do a past, present and future. And, and I'm being told that is, that is the way to go for today. But the past is like that much past. It's not like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago. It's like that much past, whatever that might mean to you. So when you take a look at the traditional um, ten of, or nine of cups, you know, you've got this old boy and he's sitting there all smug on his bench and he's in this outfit and okay, that robe that he's wearing has always reminded me of jail, the, the, the stripes that the prisoners wear when they're working on the side of the road, you know? Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. Now, it, it, I don't know anybody else that it means that for. And, and if you're working with tarot, if you're learning tarot, if you're, you know, um, you know, if you're a beginner at tarot, you'll, you'll find hopefully over time that your cards and the archetypal imagery in those tarot cards will start to, you'll form a relationship with them. And even though the overall meaning of a card in the traditional meanings will be important, really at the end of the day, the relationship that you have with the imagery and the, the people and the, you know, all of the symbolism and meaning in the cards, that, that will take on kind of a life of its own for you, right? So the Nine of Cups card really is, I mean, look at it. It's just filled with all this golden glowy light. There's all those gold awards or chalices or, you know, whatever, however you see them, but they are chalices. And he's sitting there all smug with a little bitty smile on his face, right? Can you see that little bitty smile? And rightly so, because you've, you've accomplished it. You, 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 you're satisfied. You, you've done a really good job and there's no reason that you shouldn't um, take a bow, that you shouldn't be proud of yourself. And I find that in love, oftentimes, I don't, I just think, you know, when, when we're around kids, we're very liberal with the I'm proud of you. As we get older, I don't know why adults don't really ever, ever give as many I'm proud of you's because people do need to hear that, especially people that you love. And I would bet that it's something that if I, if I say to you all, I'm proud of you, I think that will really tug at the heartstrings of some of you. And I really mean it. I am proud of you. And the reason that I am, if I don't know you, but, and I, I mean, I don't know what you do in your life and I don't know what your choices are and I don't know this and I don't know that, but I know you show up here. And what that means is you're moving forward on a spiritual path that is meant to help and heal you as well as anybody else that you come in contact with. So of course, I'm very proud of you for that. And whether it's my channel or it's anybody else's channel, good for you. Add a girl, add a boy, add a everybody, right? So one of the things that this card always means for me when I'm, when I'm doing a tarot reading for somebody 
is that, um, oh, thank you, C. Canuel. So one of those things that I would say is that the first thing that Nine of Cups is speaking to you with in terms of any kind of love that's on your mind is to express pr pride of your own and own it and to, and to gift that, that to others who might be needing to hear it. Even if it's something you consider small, um, I, it, 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 it's not small to someone else. You can never know how big it will be. Case in point. So this past Christmas, my sister and I, um, decided, uh, my nephew, his wife wanted to get together and do a family thing and bake cookies and that kind of thing. So we got together at my sister's house and we were baking and decorating cookies and, um, and my niece was there and, you know, so there were, there were four of us girls there having a little girls night. And I often say, I, I often tell artists of all kinds, gosh, I just wish I could. Okay. Belinda Brandy, come on now. Why are you a scammer? Why do you have to do that? What is wrong in your life? Why are you so broken, fractured? dented in pain that you have got to want to scam people. I feel sorry for you. I'm not proud of you in this moment and I'm blocking you, but I hope you find the healing that you need. Schmuck. Ugh. That's what we do. You know what? I'm going to even stop saying schmuck and putz. I'm just going to say bless their heart. Cause in the South, it means a lot more than that. But I, um, I would say that it is, you know, I made a cookie. Literally, I decorated one cookie because I've got this thing. I admire artists so much. I'm in awe of them. I don't care if you draw a stick figure. <laughs> You've drawn a stick figure and I'm like, I can't do that. So I've got this real mental block that I'm not an artist and people keep trying to tell me that I am, but in my own way, blah, blah, blah. But I really, 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 really appreciate the, um, the, the people who do real art, right? So I, um, I, it is throat chakra day. Oh, that's true. Raven, all the scammers have come out of their hidey holes. Yep. So I, uh, I apparently this was the decorated cookie for all time. Cause my sister and my niece and my nephew's wife went on and on and on and on and on. And I'm like, now if I did not had something weird going on inside of me about, I'm not an artist. It's just a cookie. I did a crap job. Um, I'm, I might've been proud of that one cookie. Cause in that moment, I mean, I actually still have pictures of that dang cookie, if you can believe that. Because a cookie, a decorated cookie, a decorated Christmas cookie. Can you believe it was such a trigger? Yeah, for me, of all people. But that's what I'm trying to say to y'all is it is, it, it is that. It can be something that small to you, but to someone else, it can be a lot of things. Like, I look at that picture every now and again when I'm doubting myself about something, I will look at that picture and go, you know what? I, I am creative enough. I am artistic enough to make this happen. And I'm, I'm using a Christmas cookie, y'all. A, a Christmas cookie is a dang talisman. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say here about the Nine of Cups. In this moment, in this tarot reading, for you, in this live, for you, is the love is all about, before we move on to the, what the rest of the card is all about, you've been crying for three days straight. I'm sorry, C. Canuel, don't cry. Ooh, oatmeal raisin cookie, my favorite. So, um, I, I, I agree with you, Unique. Don't waste your time. The Mars in me is very strong. So here, I know we all want a cookie. So thank you. I'm glad y'all would make me cookies. So let's look at this old boy's red hat. Now, this is a big deal. Okay, in terms of tarot card meanings, Colors matter. Color symbolism really matters. And when you take a look at the flaming, gorgeous, deep, vibrant red of his hat, okay, it's got a feather plume on it. You know, in today's world, that might be a little gaudy, but it's, it, it's about, it's like a peacock kind of thing. He loves showing off. He loves puffing up, which is why the puffer fish in the Arch Animal Tarot and Oracle deck is the Nine of Cups. Because now, in fairness, puffer fish puff up to, to, to protect themselves. But 
it certainly could be said that when you take a look at his, well, this is white and blue striped, right? But, but what this garment tells you, the white in it tells you that his heart is pure. And that's really what the Nine of Cups is asking of you is, is there's a purity to the love that you give, case in point. Let's say that somebody you really love has just acted like a patootie. They got their butt up on their shoulders about something you said, did, didn't do, whatever. And instead of just communicating with you and giving you the chance to make it right, they give you the silent treatment. They, um, they, uh, they get snarky. They stomp, they snort, they, whatever, they accuse, they, whatever. Okay. Oftentimes I find that people will come back with, yeah, well, when you blah, 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 uh-uh, that's not love communication at all. If you love someone and you want to work things out with them and you want everything to be in a place of love, when they come at you or walk away from you or whatever, that's not the time for you to say, well, you blah, 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 blah. It's about them at that moment. And then only you can decide what you want to do about that, right? I don't offer advice. I'm just saying in terms of communication, in terms of loving communication. Likewise, what I'm hearing, because my throat is starting to burn a little bit, I'm guessing that a number of you are having some issues I, I'm guessing that a number of you are having issues around the love, uh, around the subject of love and the communication and the communication. Uh, I just keep hearing a tickle in my throat. And so nine of cups has just told me the last line, the not, oh, by the knot of nine, what is done is mine. I don't know, Pearl, but that's really interesting. That's really interesting. Really interesting. Huh, okay, I don't know. I was trying to think what that meant. I don't know. So um, I'd have to think about that one, Pearl. It is not immediately coming to me. So all of that being said, if we go back to the Nine of Cups and... We, we also take a look at the bench uh, that, that is holding the chalices, right? Okay. It's a place of honor. It's like an altar. Um, there's a blue tablecloth, and the blue in this is very interestingly similar, and the drape of the blue cloth is very interestingly similar to the high priestess, which is all about spiritual bliss. And the Nine of Cups that's about your earthy happiness. Even however spiritual you're tapped into or however spiritual you are, the spiritual it is, because the Kabbalists call the Nine of Cups the Lord of Material Happiness. And astrologically, the Nine of Cups car, uh, card corresponds to Jupiter in Pisces. And the energy of that allows us to experience divine blessings through our emotions. Kind of like... Um, kind of like this morning. It really was a divine blessing sitting out there in, I don't even know where. And I, I, I can't describe the experience except for to say those are the right words. It was a divine blessing because of the nature, the scope, the depth, the breadth of the love that I experienced. Now, again, this reading is about you all. It's not about me. And it is about the joy. It is about the bliss. But there's something going on with y'all. There's something going on with y'all about the subject of love that is, I, I, I bet if I had, if, if not, if 100% of you filled out a, a yes or no, I bet love of some kind has been on your mind in the last few days at least, right? So this is crucially important. And 
you know, just because this card is a card of joy and accomplishment and pride, that doesn't mean it's not, it's, it's always been easy. The fact that, that this guy is smiling tells you that he's accomplished something, a lot of things. And the nine of cups always comes with a promise. So this is in the, um, this is in the last, like, so this card, right? I'm, I'm, what I'm doing for you guys is a, this is a live tarot card reading today. And I'm doing a three card spread. And so this is, for those of you just joining us, this is the past card, but it's not so very far in the past. It's just maybe, you know, a few weeks ago, six months ago, maybe a year ago, but it's not so in the past, right? Okay. Pardon me, y'all. It's not you. It's me. I promise. I ran out of caffeine. I haven't had any tea this morning. And I was, I don't know where I was in my sleep last night. But all that being said, it's, if you take a look at the golden chalices, chalices are a very feminine energy. They're a receptive energy. And those, the, the not all of the cups you might, you know, you, you might imagine if there, it's a celebration, they're filled with wine or champagne or whatever your favorite drink is. But some of them are just filled with tears and sweat. Some of them are, are just filled with the, the, the physical fluidness of what it took to get to where you are. And I find this card to show up a lot of times with people who are really working around their self-worth, their own self-value, their self-love. Um, let's say that someone has betrayed them and they're gutted. The, I will see this card show up a lot. And so I know Carl Coffey. So that said, um, if we if we take a look at remembering that the Kabbalist call, the nine of cups card, the Lord of material happiness. Okay. A lot of readers also call this the wishes granted card. And it, it, that's why I asked you guys to think so deeply this morning, because this isn't about like a thought about love. That's just struck you like, Oh, I'd love to have this today. Or I'd love to go on this vacation. or I'd love to do this. This is about something deeply, deeply long time, long time meaningful. Okay. Let's see. I don't, y'all, I'm trying to stay in the tarot world, but I'm so much in my psychic mind today. That's why I'm, I'm like starting and stopping and starting and stopping. I want, I wonder if spirit is just urging me to just go straight into readings for you guys, because I'm, I'm having a hard time focusing on the tarot and I keep hearing snippets of information and your voices coming to me in my, in my my biggest psychic ear, my right ear. But let me just, let, let me just talk about this, the nine of tarot card, the nine of cups for just a few minutes more. Um, and that is no matter what you've been through, if you will, if you will see it as a time of learning, it could be very, very helpful to you. And when you're in the soup, when you're in the thick of things, it can be very difficult to see that, but you accomplished dreams and things that other people don't even aspire to because they don't believe that they can do it. And it's, it, it, good for you. And you, it's time for you to leave the naysayers behind. It's time for you to step into your moment of glory and realize that when you do that, the people who can't abide by your success in whatever area it is, they're just going to fall by the wayside. And they, they literally are going to shy away from your bright light. It'll be too bright for them. In your spiritual progress, what this card is asking you when you see, well, when you see kind of how wide the scope is, how far these, these cards stretch from one side of the card to the other. It's also asking you to expand your scope of belief, your scope of what you want, what you don't want, what you're willing to put up with, what you're not willing to put up with, what you want to bring in your life. I love, I love it when people say to me, you know, I'd be happy if just this would happen. Because most times what they're thinking is if they're here, they'll be so grateful if things just go to here. But why can't they start focusing or why won't they see that things could go 
anywhere they wanted them to go. It's unlimited. Well, because when you're in that place, it can be very difficult to see if you've grown up or you've been indoctrinated into a, um, or when you've been indoctrinated in, into a way of thinking, like for with me, I love my mom man. she was, she was something else. But she always, you know, my mom had such a hard time financially, you know, in that time in the South, single parent, two kids. And she always used to say, God, two steps forward and three steps back. And I grew up saying the same thing. When I stopped saying two steps forward and three steps back, and I started saying three steps forward and no steps back, and then it was five steps forward, and then it was 10, and then it was, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. And that's exactly how I've lived my life. I'm just going to keep going. It has served me very well. It hasn't been easy. Lord knows it hasn't been easy. But I don't, I don't have limitations truly don't have limitations and that's really what the nine of cups tarot card is asking you all to remember in particular about love whatever kind of love is going on is you don't have any limitations and the nine of cups will support you in all of that now having said that let's talk about the puffer fish for a minute <laughs> so the puffer fish will puff up when it wants to protect itself and okay that is a show of bravado and it's 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 what that fish has to work with that's what it's been given y'all pardon me i've got to eat a mint my throat is a little bit i've been doing a lot of talking the last couple of days so in as it pertains to love as it pertains to the love that you're giving the love that's being given back to you, the love that you're seeking. Are you blocking it? Are you self-protecting so much that you're not allowing anything or anyone in? How's that working for you if you are, right? Now, protecting yourself is a very sacred task. I highly recommend it. However, when you look at a puffer fish... <laughs> They look like cartoon characters. They look like anime figures. They are the cutest little things ever. All of them. But don't let the cuteness fool you. Don't let the cuteness fool you. When they... When they puff up... Somebody around them is going to die. Maybe. And I don't mean that literally. What I am saying is that... The first person you have to puff up for is yourself. And in a way, that's to protect yourself. Because who here grew up, who here grew up feeling like they weren't loved? Who here grew up feeling abandoned? Who, feel, who here grew up feeling um, sorry, I'm looking, oh my God, quadri, quadri, goodbye. I'm drawn to you. I'm drawn to you too. It's called being psychic. That's why I block you. Okay. So. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Watch this. This is fantastic. The next time you, <laughs> I gotta get some sleep. Uh, the next time you want to blow up at somebody or bow up to somebody and you need the courage and you need the support, I would really encourage you if you need to get prepared, like if you need to work yourself up for this. You got to be a puffer fish. No joke. You got to be a puffer fish. So listen, I'm not laughing at your pain. Honest to goodness, I'm not. What I'm saying is when I teach, when I teach with spirit totem and power animals, well, I have a class going right now. It's an awesome class. I love the people in this class. We're going to get to 
metamorphosizing into spirit totem and power animals. We're going to work into journeying so that we, we realize that we are a dolphin. We are a puffer fish. We are an eagle. Not we invoke it, not we hitch a ride on it. We are it. And this is going to blow some people's minds, blow their minds. So literally, if you are dealing with, um, <laughs> so literally, if you are dealing with, hey, Lisa, I thought you were gone. Um, uh, if, if you're dealing with that self-love kind of thing and you need self-protection and you're just, you know, you're meditating and you're trying to do this, and wah, just be a puffer fish. Number one, it'll lighten the mood, which is why you're having a tough time getting, getting to where you need to be. You're, you're, wah, you're either concentrating so hard or you're blocking so hard. It's, it's a futile effort. Your resistance is futile, but, um, yeah, just try being the puffer fish. <laughs> We're done here. Pick up your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot Oracle Dex described by YouTube channel. You, get... you know, I often wonder why spirit chooses me to do the dorkiest things. I, I mean, why? Why is that? I don't know. One day I'll know. All right. So <laughs> we'll get back to Pufferfish because here's the thing. It's an adorable little critter that can have absolutely lethal ramifications. So the thing about it is, is when you when you take a look at puffer fish as a spirit totem and power animal remember spirit animals are the animals that come to you in your hour of need totem animals are the animals that you identify with most um and that starts with your zodiac sign your zodiac animal and then when you're looking for a power animal you know when you need help expanding anything expanding your consciousness expanding your confidence expanding your j just expanding your your material wealth your money, your straight up money. Pufferfish is a great, great, great power animal ally. A great one. They don't, they do take themselves seriously when it matters. And they're strong enough and brave enough and courageous enough to do what matters, meaning to confront what is there. Now, a lot of animals don't do that. A lot of animals, their survival depends on their willingness to flight, just to, just to go, I'm out. And there are millions of animals that do that. But pufferfish as a nine of cups tells you it is not time to do that. As regards whatever love this is, it's on your mind. The, the fight has got to be there. The flight, no, and the freeze, no, you've just got to you've got to put up the fight, not in a negative sense, but sometimes we war against themselves, right? Okay. So all of that said, that is the first part of this reading, uh, Pufferfish, which is the nine of cups tarot card. And now we're going to move into the next card, which is, as we just talked about work, let me ask this question. Okay, I don't know who's going to be willing to be like sell themselves out or be honest on here. I don't know. Um, but I'm hoping that you will. Who here just really feels like um, they're working hard and not getting anywhere? They're working hard and just not having anything to show for it. Um. You just keep, you, you feel like you keep beating yourself up against a brick wall, beating yourself up against a brick wall. Who, who feels that way? Let me see who feels that way. Aw. Tanu. Pearl. Kristen. You don't have to sell yourself out, but if this is you, Natasha, story of my life, Sheila. That's not true, Restless. Okay. All right. Y'all, I know it is not pretty watching me chaw on this mint, but if I don't chaw on this mint, I'm not getting through this day. It's not happening. Okay. Let me just tell y'all something. This reading is so kooky today. 
honest to goodness, y'all may be the only people that ever see it. I may take it right off the internet because I'm fixing to step out on a limb. I am fixing to step out on a limb. Maybe I need to stop saying I'm the spiritual crash test dummy from spirit and because spirit is making me the spiritual crash test dummy. I know other people talk about things like this, but that's their lane. That's what they do. I don't do that. Not that I think there's anything wrong with it. I watch them. It's just not my lane. But here we go. <sighs> Whatever this is on your mind about love at this moment, like literally right now today at 950, whatever it is, Eastern Standard Time, 953 Eastern Standard Time. And you feel like you just keep hitting a brick wall, hitting a brick wall, hitting a brick wall, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to gain. The Ten of Wands is in that place for you today. And this is the, this is the card that I always see when I want to caution people to work smart, not hard. And there's a duality when it comes to success, depending on what kind of success you want to achieve. Now, the scarab in my deck is the Ten of Wands. And we're going to get to scarab in a minute. But for this live tarot reading today, for this pick a card for today, the Ten of Wands is vitally, vitally important to those of you that have blocks. And here's why. Ambition is a, Laura Ingalls Wilder, the real Laura Ingalls Wilder, in one of her bo books wrote, no joke, I read the whole series about a thousand times when I was a kid. Ambition is a good servant, but it is a bad master. When is enough enough? When you reap what you've sown, do you take time to celebrate it? Or are you already looking back over it, piecing it apart? What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And all you're focused on is the negative because that's, ne it's, even if you're trying to find out what I could have done better, it's still negative. Okay, because you're assuming that you did something not right or not good enough, right? Okay, so all that said, all of that said, I'd be like, what? Okay, so all of that said, if you're in a place where you feel like you are working so hard and you're bundled, the, the, the whatever sticks that you are that you've gathered up, your emotions, your anything, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. It could be that you're literally moving a house um, or to a different, you're just moving, anything like that. It, it's time for you, the, the only question really you should be asking yourself right now is am I working hard or am I working smart? I don't know. I think probably because I grew up in farm country. I can, I, I can look at something really, really crazy heavy, like hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And I can tell you how to get it off a truck easily. I can tell you what pieces of furniture or farm equipment or whatever will fit in a two fo square foot space and how to do it. It's spatial recognition, right? But that whole thing about working smart, not hard came because I, I grew up in a single parent household. It was just women, me, my mom, my grandma, my sister, but my sister went to college. There's eight years between us. She went to college when I was just seven. She went early entry into college because she's a genius, which she reminds me of all the time. So, um, you know, feed is heavy. Bricks are heavy. Fence posts are heavy. Wind and, wind and barbed wire around fence posts on 13 acres with a come along. That's a thing that it gets your uh, barbed wire real tight so you can then swing a hammer and put the staples. Okay, creosote posts, they'll burn the snot out of you. Man, worst, most toxic things ever. That said, we were women. I was a kid. 
I know how to use balance. You scoot a fence post this far to the bottom back of a truck. You get in, you tilt the end up. It says whoop, whoop. And you just drive that truck along. You don't tote those things anywhere. You just drive your truck along and you say whoop, plop, whoop, plop. That's the official noise. If you are setting fence post, that's the official noise. Whoop, plop. Okay. So that said, I have to get to work, but from the bottom of my heart, my life has been divinely blessed. Oh, that's so very nice. The inner work club. How very kind for you. Okay. This is the time for you to take a look at, are you struggling? And do you even know that you're struggling? And if you don't know, maybe, maybe just, maybe this reading is just literally manna from heaven. It's literally just a gift to go, Hey, I know you think you're doing okay and you are and you're happy and you feel comfortable and you don't feel overworked, but if you would consider doing this or you would consider trying this, it could get 50% easier for you. Would you do it? Man, I'd be like, what? I'd be like easier? Rock on, I'm in. Okay. That's not that you all need to be like me. Lordy be forbid. But if you know that you're struggling, stop right where you are, stop struggling and take a breath and ask the scarab. We'll get to this in a minute. Ask the scarab to show you why you're struggling and what steps you can take to accomplish what you want to accomplish without the struggle. I have found over the years, again, at this point, I think I've, I always say 65,000, but by the end of this year, I, I, I will bet you I will have read over 70,000 people, especially during the pandemic. Great googly moogly. So you've got to be willing to see your own insanity. And what I mean by that is this. I want to say it was Einstein that said, or Tesla, or I don't know, one of those famous smart people said, when you keep repeating the same thing and you keep getting the same results and it's results you don't like and don't want, that's insanity. Why would you do that? If you're willing to take a look at, at what you, you could fix, you could heal, you could adjust, you could expand your thinking on all of a sudden, Anything that you want to have in love shows up just like that. Now, that doesn't mean for you to stop putting your back into things. When I say that, that's what we say here in the South. Put your back into it. And you see he's leaning forward. He's got all of his energy moving forward, his physique moving forward, which means you're on the right path. Just you're having trouble getting, you're having trouble Ease on down, ease on down the road. Come on and ease on down, ease on down the road. You've got to be easing on down the road. That's your official song today from The Wiz, ease on down the road. So if you're not easing on down the road, you ain't doing it right. Period. I don't care how good your intentions are. I don't care how pure your intentions are. You're you're not doing it right. <laughs> so stop struggling. <laughs> just stop struggling. It just has to be shown the way. Now, some people are so invested in, in what they think. Well, somebody, they don't like the feeling of being wrong. Why are you wrong? If you find out you're struggling and there's no need to do it that way, there's a better way. Why does that make you wrong? Why doesn't it just make you, why doesn't it make you look smart like you've identified an issue you're going to fix the issue and then it's going to get better I I don't right okay so that said if you take a look at the town that you can see in the distance here it's a long walk to get there but the energy of that village or that town is that it looks really solid steady and stable and he is dressed in, what? What is he dressed in? What are the colors? What does color symbolize here? Orange, yellow, and red, the colors of fire. And so he's super ambitious. He's super ready to get going. He is going. 
But the fan, the, y'all ever heard you can't see the forest for the trees? Okay. The ones that are fanned out in front of him aren't seeing the blue sky. They're not seeing that great town. There's just all kinds of things that it's not seeing. And that's a problem because all he knows is work, 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 work. And if you're working, 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 but you have a, a thing in your mind that keeps telling you two steps forward and three steps back, two steps forward and three steps back, you're in the most horrible infinite loop, the most horrible infinite loop. And you could be have you, you could have been doing this for so long. You're going on autopilot. You don't even know. You don't even know what's going on. The other day, here comes a public story. I was in Publix. Imagine that. And there was an older fellow behind the red. <laughs> older. He was probably my age. And he was clicking keys. You know, he was he was the checkout person for that day. We just happened to strike up a conversation and he was a funny cat. And he said, I said, so how do you like working here? He goes, I'm living the dream. He couldn't have been more snide and sarcastic. And I knew what he meant. He was cracking, but I could, t I said, so if you had your druthers, what would you really be doing? I remember what he said. I think he said something like owning his own body shop or computer, computer body shop business or something like that. And I said, so what's prevented you from doing that? He said, I don't know anything about opening a business. I said, do you ever try to find out? Well, no, because, you know, I've never had the money. I said, have a good day. And out the door I went. Because I watched him start to spin in, spin in his infinite loop of the wise, of the wise, of the wise. Y'all, I'm no great shining example of pretty much anything but I have had the courage to be a comic an actor a talent manager a coach a plus size model I'll show y'all pictures one day I still have them I was one of the first plus size models in America there were only like 10 of us and I was too short so I didn't get to go I, only, I was only 5'9 at that point I'm 5'7 now um I owned a topiary company. Now I'm an author, a tarot reader, a psychic medium with an online, with a, with a YouTube channel. That's kind of a kooky life, don't you think? <laughs> it's been hard. But most of it, I've loved every second of it. Wise, the wise don't have it. They're, stop with the wise. Stop here in the infinite loop. Because what that means is, I don't want to be a cashier at Publix. I couldn't do that job. There'd be one person freak out on me and I'd be like, bye. That's hard to me. What they do is hard. Some people love it. They love talking to people. They love talking about food and groceries. They just love it. And I love that they love it. I'm not that person. So I would not subject myself to that. Have you all ever... Oh my gosh, this is the perfect movie for this reading for today. Have y'all ever seen the movie Cloud Atlas with Tom Hanks and Halle Berry? I'm begging you to watch that movie. I'm begging you to watch that movie. It says everything there is to say about the infinite nature of love. Every, every, everything. And there's a scene, a couple scenes, and Hugh Jackman's in it in a role you can't even believe. There are actually a few people in it in roles you can't even believe. And the actor, the actors in it play different roles throughout, throughout time. They're amazing. That said, there's a scene, a couple scenes in there where one of the characters said, I will not be subject to criminal abuse. I will not be subject to criminal abuse. If you're working so hard over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you might be getting somewhere. What's the trade-off? You losing time for yourself with your family for, to do the things that you, you want to do? Now, I love what I do. And I always tell people I'm a workaholic. And I am. I don't know that I would be this way if I wasn't doing something I love. Love, 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 love. But there is still an element of me 
that was indoctrinated with a pattern of you got to work, you got to go, you got to work, you got to go, you got to, you can't take a day off. If you take a day off, you don't eat. What? (laughs) What? So all that said, I'm begging you, the 10 of wands, it's traditional tarot card meetings. When you take a look at the floor, this yellow floor, that's about planning and moving forward. And you could walk that path in your sleep. And this card is called the Lord of Optimism. Because here's the secret of being the work hard person. There's a secret. People drop their jaws every time I lay this truth on them. This card is called the Lord of Optimism because if you get up every day and you live to fight another day and you live to fight another day and you're working hard and you're working hard and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. going, Do you know how many people lay down and just go, I can't. Somebody pick me up. Somebody do it for me. I can't. I have never, ever had one of those moments. I might one day. I just never had. Everybody does, I think, though. You get to a place where you're like, you know what? I just can't. But there are people that really don't then after that. But you all are not like that. You wouldn't be at my channel if you were like that. I would have disturbed your demons a long time ago. A long time ago. You'd be like, she's a harsh bitch. No, I'm not. I'm here to inspire you. I'm here to lift you up. I'm here to let you know that you are good enough and smart enough and anything enough to do anything you want. Anything. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what education you have or don't have. I'm telling you, if Bernadette can do it, y'all can certainly fly on by me. Because most most of y'all are smarter than me. But being that said, The reason this card is called the card of optimism is this. If you're getting up and doing it the next day, you must believe at some point it's going to get better. You must believe at some point it's going to serve your purpose. Now, there's a very small percentage of you that just, oh, this is the life I've got. This is what I got. Not of y'all, but of people out there in the world. My wild pack is not like that. Y'all are perfect in every way. But there are people out there that subject themselves to criminal abuse because it's criminal. It is criminal which is why I hate farm animal farming. Don't get me started on that. It's criminal abuse to, to, to subject yourself to that hard work and misery, that hard work and not reaping the rewards or at least rewards that are enough to give you a roof over your head, to put the kind of food that you want in your stomach and take care of your family and, you know, have whatever. Okay. So stop it. Stop it right now. Because whatever love this is, and that's why early, hey, Nikki, thank you so much. Nikki, you're so generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the donation. It is, it, the, today is about a love. And if y'all weren't here earlier, I was shown it's about love like, like I don't even know that you've ever considered love before. It's not even about the kind of love that you have, the kind of love that you experience, the kind of love that you want. It's about the love that you already are. Does that make sense? Okay. Amy Pittman. I know you're still here. Amy J. Pittman. Today is going to be a frap run day. I'm just telling you now. I can't hang. So now we're going to talk about the scarab as a spirit totem and power animal. And that's why I said a little bit earlier, I can't even believe I'm going to say this. I can't even believe I'm going to do this. And yet I'm going to. Because it's what spirit is telling me and I don't argue with spirit. Okay. I'm not a person that resonates so much with Egyptian anything. I respect it. I know all the symbolism from it, but it's not like, it's not my tribe. It's just not my tribe. But to the Egyptians, beetles, in particular scarab beetles, they're like cows in India. Hey, Georgie. Come on. Come say hi to everybody, Georgie. My new adopted kitty. My pirate kitty. Come on, Georgie. 
Hey, me. You coming up? Come see. You guys want to meet Georgie? Hey, Georgie the Pirate Kitty. Come on. Come on. We're very excited. He's only been here a week. Come on. And he jumps up to get love. Everybody meet Georgie. Hold on. I'll pick him up. You can see Georgie the Pirate Kitty. <gasps> Georgie the Pirate Kitty. He's, he's a little shy. He's not ready to show you his eye. He, we call him a pirate kitty because, see, he's got that one eye. He's got, it's got to go out. It's, um, it's, my vet told me it's, uh, hereditary, uh, something. I don't remember. But anyway, eventually, it doesn't hurt him or anything, but eventually it has to come out. So if I'm acting weird or moving weird, it's because I got a cat in my lap. And he's only been here a week and a half, so it's a big honor for him to come up in my lap and want love. Okay, so now, sorry, y'all. <laughs> oh, you all are very important, but my animals, you know, they rule, they rule the roost. Okay, so going back to the Egyptian thing, right? Okay. Oh, my gosh, my black cat showed up and wanted in my lap when I'm talking about Egypt. Bast anyone? Oh, please, Georgie, don't get on the keyboard. You're going to hang up this call, and that's going to go very badly. Okay. <laughs> I have a mustache. <laughs> oh, I don't, I think y'all are the only one that's going to ever see this live. I, I think I'm going to take it down off the internet after the live today. Okay. So here's the thing about, um, Egypt and here's the thing about scarabs. They truly are holy, holy animals there. And they carry big, 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 big magic in the, in those that study Egyptology and those that figure that they have had, um, they have had some past lives that, um, right, <laughs> right. Love the horns. You, you, you're, she's a, she's a, she's a, a priestess, a priestess of Bath. Yes. Okay. So all that said, the, and now he's gone. He just wanted to make an appearance. Hello. Um, and if I could just say this, if you all are looking to adopt cats, I really hope that you will consider black cats because they are the least adopted, the most euthanized, uh, and most mistreated cats on the planet. People are still ignorant and think that they're bad luck. They carry evil juju. They'll curse you. What? Um, so please, if you're thinking about adopting and thank you to Lisa Snyder because she did, she adopted two black cats just recently. So all that said, Kelly, you've been having black cat messages. Why would I hate you? Cause you're a dog person. Well, everybody's what they are. I don't particularly care for sharks. I respect them, but I don't want to meet them and I don't want one. I don't want to be anywhere near them. And I'm not a big, I'm, I respect snakes and I honor them, especially for their teaching and their wisdom. But you'll, ne I've held a snake one time. It was a big fat 80 pound yellow, uh, yellow, uh, golden Python. I've got pictures. I'll show you guys one day. So all of that said, Oh, Parsana, bless your pee picking heart. You're banned. You're banned. You're blocked. Lordy. Okay. All right. I'm taking the deep dive into Egypt. Whatever this is, I, I don't, I don't know that I've ever asked you all to consider working with a God archetype. I don't say the G word around here. I don't talk about the G word. Uh, I don't have any opinions that I want to share about the G word because I don't know. Well, I don't. Can anybody prove anything? No. You just know how you feel. You know what strikes a chord with you. You know what you want to do. You know what you don't want to do. However, I am being called to ask you all for the love that you're for the, the love that you're focused on in this reading and in the here and now to work with the sun god Ra. You know, to the Egyptians, the symbolism and meaning of a scarab is that it was the embodiment of their, of their sun god Ra, or, or at least an aspect of it. And it's about the, that the, the scarab's duty on this earth was to push the sun towards the horizon for dawn. And that was the sake of duty. Or that was the sacred duty of scarab, which is exactly why the scarab wanted to be the 10 of wands. Because if you take a look, if you, if you can envision this scarab 
up in the sky and see how the scarab is leaned forward and the scarab is kind of in that same head down got my got my you know i'm moving i'm moving i'm moving imagine trying to push the sun to the horizon so that it would dawn a new day and sunlight would show for everyone on earth now that is a sacred duty so when i see oh lordy i'm gonna get choked up thank you axie thank you sweetheart thank you thank you so much oh bless the pirate kitty and the babies thank you he will have to have his eye out at some point but I, the vet says it's not hurting him or uncomfortable in any way and so i don't want to put him through that trauma yet because he just got here he'll hate me forever okay y'all this is the thing you're being asked to work with the sun god Ra, because whatever this thing is about love that you have you've got to push the sun to the horizon realize that you are the sun you are the god Ra. you are the bast you are egypt you are egyptian you're all of those things i'm those things everyone is everything that's where the we are one comes from it's a much longer story than that but okay so many of you are afraid to shine your light at its fullest that I just, I just want to hug each and every one of you. I just want to tug the snot right out of you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for the donation very much. Because you, you, you all just don't see. You're not willing to see the lights that you really are. And the lights that you shine for other people. And it can come in the most fleeting of moment it can be just something you say you could be talking to a friend of yours and in you say something to somebody to your friend and a complete stranger is passing by side you and they heard what you said and it was so relative to them in that moment you've you've passed along a message colette baron reed calls it a cleat on where you deliver a message for somebody you don't even know you're delivering a message for them when i was in sedona a few years ago with my bff we went to a pizza restaurant, vegan pizza, organic, was all right. But our server, she walked up to the table and my heart dropped to my toes. And I looked at my friend and she said, because we were trying to be on vacation and I was in a highly psychic place, Sedona. I don't know if you've ever been there. I, my, that was it. It didn't matter how hard I tried. My spotty senses were flared out like that old puffer fish. So I said, I, I have to. She said, okay. So the gal came back to bring us our drinks. I said, do you have a minute? She said, yes. I said, I'm a professional psychic medium and I believe I have a message for you. Would it be okay if I gave it to you? Yes. I said, it's kind of serious and kind of personal. Yes. I said, you're going to get your children back. You made a mistake. It's okay. You're going to get them back. That's all you need to know. You've got to take the heaviness off your heart. Stop thinking about it. Stop. You're, you've made yourself sick. You, you were just diagnosed with an ulcer, right? Yes. I said, it's okay. It's okay you're going to get them back. You're going to be okay. You're going to do the right things. It's going to, it's going to be okay. I can't help. It was in a pizza restaurant. I can't help it. Just, I mean, I, I don't even know how our pizza came out. Right. Cause I just watched that kid get catatonic and walk through the restaurant on autopilot like this. The blood drained completely out of her face. I don't know the whole story. I don't want to know the whole story. I just know that in that moment, no matter how tragic what was going on in her life was, she had to have that bit of raw, that bit of sun. Somebody had to push her sun to the horizon so that it could shine. And we ate our pizza, we left. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, this does not have to be with delivering a psychic message. It can be as simple as, 
and I know every slap one of you are empathic because that's how every living thing is hardwired is to be sensitive. It is, um, it is all about you shining your light in whatever way you want to shine it. I don't care what other people tell you. I don't care if they tell you yes. I don't care if they tell you no. It has to come from you. You've got to be your own energizer bunny. That's that. And again, if you will consider working with Ra, the Egyptian sun god, and if you're not into Egyptology and the Ankh and the Eye of Horus and all that, you, you may want to spend a little bit of time working with Egyptian symbolism and meaning because it is wildly meaningful for you in this moment today, specifically as it regards love. And further, well, I'm going to go back to the beginning of calling occupants for interplanetary or with interplanetary craft. For those of you that are all up in the galactic thing, I don't know. That's all I'm saying. All right. And moving on finally, and we're going to wrap this one up very, very, very quickly because I got to stay on time today. Uh, not something I'm very good at, but I'm working on it. In the future, and just like this past, uh, for you know, for this tarot card reading, this past card is like only this far in the past. This future-oriented card is literally right around the corner. Like, don't be surprised if you walk out of your house today and you're like, oh, and there's a, a delivery truck backing up, delivering your dream to you, your dream love, whatever you want. And you're like, ah, 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 ah. And the truck is backing up. The truck is backing up. They're like, whatever your address is, yes, we've got a delivery for you. That's you in this moment because. <laughs> Bam. The Jaguar, the Queen of Swords. Okay. Here is the thing about this yeah baby delivery truck in 30 minutes or less sorry i got kitties swarming around my feet they tickle um so the one i'm just gonna say literally just a couple things about the queen of swords and the jaguar because if you're gonna shine your light please please shine your light as bright as you can i Turn that thing up. Stephine, good morning. What I would say is when you do that and, and do what I hope you do, you've got to be ready to be the queen. And I, it doesn't matter what gender you are, but this is like a, 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 a ruler. Oh, Georgie is going out to investigate the kitchen. Ooh. They're getting more comfortable. Where's Barney? Oh, Barney's right behind him. Ooh, and they step up to the plate. They stepped up to the threshold. You can't see them, but they did. Oh, <gasps> this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Turn on your hot light. We should do that one day. You guys should just put snippets of the songs in there and see if I can um, guess the song and sing it. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Hey, listen, just to know, just to tell y'all something, um, I, I'm planning this for next April, but I'm putting the, I'm putting it out there now. I'm going to run another Kickstarter. I'm going to decide I'm going to run a Kickstarter every April for whatever new product I have. Um, and, uh, I have a new tarot deck coming out and the book is coming. I'm trying to deal with shipping stuff. I'm going to get back to this last card in just a second though. But, um, and I'm going to do a marathon. There's going to be the last week of the, um, the last week of the Kickstarter. I'm going to do lives for like six and seven hours a day. I'll have to take some breaks, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to do lives where I just do readings and readings and readings and readings because I want to raise, uh, April is prevention of animal, uh, prevention of animal cruelty month. And I want to raise like old, great googly moogly. Okay. But let me go back to this card. Okay. Listen, cause this, the queen of swords and the, and the Jaguar card, we're just going to wrap that up, but quick, when you start letting your light shine and you start working smart, not hard. You're going to have to cut away some things with no question. You're going to have to have the courage that a supreme ruler would have and the vision, hopefully the vision of what a supreme ruler would have and, and cut away what no longer serves, whatever's standing in your way. And that might mean parts of yourself. If I had a nickel for every person that goes through a spiritual awakening and then subsequently 
is left with no other choice but to just to walk away from a relationship of some kind. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And it can be uncomfortable and that can seem like you're working hard, but that's where the balance of this card comes in because this card is a balance. Ambition is a good servant, but it is a bad master. And so if you're working, if, if you'll, if you'll do what's been asked of you today, which is look into Egyptian symbolism, cause I'm telling you now, Nikki, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the donation. Thank you. If this goes with the love that you want to have experience or be now and like right there in the future, or even it's, if, even if it's for your forever future, the, the, the change, the metamorphosis, the this, the that, it's going to be dur in this time. You know what I mean? Hey, Frank, um, that, thank you, Natalia. Thank you so much for the donations. You guys are very generous today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause the, I really do thank you. Cause the animal charities, um, I support only animal charities that work toward the prevention of cruelty to animals. And man, with this pandemic, they are all running tight. It is scary times out there for animal charities. Very scary times. So, um, so all that being said, I, I want to give you some kind of uplifting encouragement about the Queen of Swords and the Jaguar. It, it is an encouraging card. It's a powerful encouraging card. But that's the thing is it's powerful and people can be super afraid to cut out the fat. They can be super afraid to cut out what no longer serves them. Loathen psychic readings. That is a great name for you. Loathen because I loathe in you. I want you to find help, but I do loathe in you in this moment. Okay. So that being said, Ooh, I walked away from my known world and moved halfway across the country to be my authentic self. Excellent. All right. That said, you know, we, do, we see a lot of memes on Facebook, on all, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, wherever, on all the social media channels about, you know, some days you just have to put on your crown and let them know who they're dealing with. You know, women, w women should support other women by just, you know, fixing their crown when it's crooked and not telling them what's wrong or, you know, lot, lots of, you know, yes, queen, all of that kind of thing. But, oh, Don, la, 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 I can't hear that. I can't see that. Um, all of that said, it's no joke. When the Queen of Swords, when any queen comes out in a tarot card reading, especially the Queen of Swords, it's no joke. It means that you are going to be faced with decisions as a ruler, as a leader of your own life. Okay. But it may, it may, your life touches so many other people and situations. And remember, what you say, think, and do every day, even when you're asleep. Thank you, Jody. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Jody. That's very kind, you guys. Thank you for the donations today. That, that being said, it's, Let me also say this about the Queen of Swords. She knows timing. This is why Jaguar wanted to be the Queen of Swords. Sometimes you've just got to jump right on a situation and you've got to take it out. Sometimes it's smarter to sit back and watch. My cats, they're sitting in the doorway. They're doing this. They're looking, they're looking and I watch them. They look 360 degrees. They'll even look behind them. And then they'll smell. Then they'll start to step out because everybody's adjusting to everybody else. Yesterday we had two hisses. It was a big fat lot of nothing. I hissed back <laughs> at them. That stopped them. Um, Hops tried to break up what she thought was going to be a fight. It was hilarious. And then she started snoring again. And, uh, but you, when you, when it is, when it is time to move, when it is time to pounce, you've got to be okay with it because walking up to a situation with a sword and going, but not being able to whack, whack, be your Zorro, ah, it's not going to teach you anything. It's not going to be helpful to you. 
because you're going to have learned what chickening out looks like. Don't chicken out. Now, that's not saying to rush willy-nilly into something. That's saying don't chicken out. Now, if you've decided some battles are not worth fighting, okay, that's wisdom. But be very clear that you haven't done, be very clear when you make that decision that you're not making that decision as a coping mechanism or to hide something inside of yourself that's not authentic because you don't want to fell that sword. You don't want to make that decision. You don't want to cut out the fat. Don't do that. This is not going to be helpful because kooky as this reading has been today, the hope is that you have been activated for incredibly expansive thinking, for incredible love, for incredible communication, knowing that you're, that you're, that your grit, your wishes are going to be granted. Your dreams are going to come true as long as you do the work that we talked about today, right? It's not hard. It just might take some gumption. And I know you've got gumption. I know you do. So I got to scoot out of here, y'all. I hope it was helpful. I love y'all so much. You don't even know. Ground control to Major Tom. I don't know why I love that song, but I do. I, uh... I hope you have the most beautiful weekend. I hope it fulfills you in every way and every day. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the little ringy dingy bell thingy. Get all the notifications. Please share. I'll have to think about it. I'll leave the video up for a little while, but I have to think about if I want this video out there in the world because we talked about Egypt gods and aliens and <laughs> it's been a trip. <laughs> it's been a journey. So all of that said, oh, novella, you don't think you've ever known what it's like to feel loved? Got to work on that. Got to work on that. Okay. So, um, I will tell you this again. I hope you take the reading seriously today because whatever the love is that's sitting on your heart, most sitting on your heart can come to full bloom. It can have never ending bloom, never ending amazingness. And, and you were given the blueprint for that today. So there you go. All right, y'all. What do we do? We do good for animals, including ourselves, and we stay wild. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care, wild